Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, let's do this problem that says, uh, let me put my pen, <laughs> sorry about that. The relay regulates voltage and current, determine the force in the spring CD, which is the spring right here. which has a stiffness of K 120 newtons per meter so that it will allow the armature to make contact at A in figure with a vertical force of 0.4 newtons. Also determine the force in the spring when the coil is energized and attracts the armature to E. And in figure B, you can see how it is when it, it is energized. Um, okay, so don't let this problem intimidate you. It's a relay problem, but most of this diagram could actually um, be erased. But I'm gonna I'm gonna explain you how this works, and it should be really simple actually. So you see these cylinders right here, right? So as you can see in A, the contact is up, and it's touching right here at A. And in the picture B, the contact is open. Why is that? Because when you pass when you pass an electrical current through this cable right here, this creates a magnetic field. Like this basically turns it into an electric magnet, which the magnet pulls the metal towards it in this manner. And then when it's energized, in other words, when you pass the electrical current, then this pulling force closes the magnet as in the second figure. And then this magnet has to stay energized for this contact to remain this way, okay? So when the electrical current leaves the cable, then this magnet gets de-energized and the spring right here will pull it and it would put it back in this state. That's what a relay basically does. So let me erase all these arrows and go here. That being said, we don't really care about the whole mechanics of the relay because you look at this and you know it can look a little bit intimidating for someone that doesn't know what a relay is. But for our intents and purposes, we could literally erase a bunch of it. I'm gonna erase it to make it a little simpler to understand and only leave what we care about. So we don't care about all this really. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the cylinder just so you know why there's a force there. This is really all we care about. Back here, pen. So we just have to focus on this part. So that being said, let's start. Let's start with uh, with this problem. There are a couple of things that they're asking us. First, they're asking us the stiffness. I mean, the the force of the spring in the first position. This is position A. I erased that too. And this is position B. So they're asking us this force, and we're gonna call this force f of s okay now we're going to focus on the first part which is this diagram now we have a force f of s going down which is the force of the spring we have a reaction at b and we're going to call this f of b and then we have a reaction at a and we're going to call this f of a that's it these are the three forces. So, and they're all like vertical, which means that you can guess some of the forces in the Y or you could do some of the moments at some point. Uh, some of the forces in the Y, you can try it, but you, you, you won't really get far with it. But you can, you can do some of the moments at B. So let me do that. Um, look at this. You have a vertical force at A of 0.4 newtons to make contact right here, right? So that means that F of A is already given to us, 0.4 newtons when we're here. This is important. So we're gonna do some of the moments, 
sum of the moments at B, assuming counterclockwise is positive as it is convention, is equal to zero. And this is equal to, we're doing sum of the moments right here. And there's only two forces creating moments here, which are F of A, which we know, and the force of the spring, which is what we're trying to find. So F of A is creating a moment which is going uh, counterclockwise, which means that it's positive, with a distance of, from B, the vertical distance A, which is this distance right here, which is 50 millimeters plus 50 millimeters, which is 100 millimeters, which I'm gonna put it in meters, 0.1 meters. Let me write this up here. 100 millimeters is equal to 0.1 meters. This is chapter one. Okay. The other force, I mean, the other moment is created by F of S, which is this one. And it's creating a clockwise moment, which means that it's negative. Negative F of S times the distance from B to C, shown in the second part of the diagram, which is 30 millimeters, which if we convert it to meters, it's 0 0.03 meters. Remember, it's not 0.3 meters. Don't make that mistake. It's 0 0.03 meters because 100 millimeters is 0.1. So 30 millimeters is 0.03 meters. Okay. But we know F of A. F of A is 0.4. So we know that 0.4 times 1, sorry, times 0.1 minus F of S, which is what we're trying to find, times 0.03 is equal to 0. Simple algebra would tell you that f of s is equal to 1.333 newtons. And that is the first, the first part of the question, which is what is f of s when the relay is off? Now, when the relay is on, which is the second part, they're asking us, what are they asking us? Oh, again, they're asking us f of s When the, when the relay is on, so F of S. But the, the diagram is slightly different. Let me erase, let me erase what I did a second ago for the first part of the problem, okay? So they're asking us F of S again, F of S, which is a force exerted by the string when the relay is on. So now we're gonna draw the body diagram again for the second part, which means F of S is on, and we know that we have a reaction F of B. We still have F of B, but we don't have an F of A reaction anymore because we are not interacting with the top part of the relay. We're not interacting with this part. It's not doing anything. But we do have a force here, F of E, which is actually the, the magnetic force that I told you about, which is pulling the relay down. Because there's current going through this wire, let's call it little ray, which is creating a magnetic field, which is pushing, which is pulling actually that, that metal down, that metal piece down, and that is energizing the relay. So we got these three forces, okay? Now, there's another little part of, of this problem that might be a little confusing, but don't worry guys, we'll demystify it. So the secret of doing this problem, and I'm gonna erase a little bit of what I did before to show you guys this. The secret is right here. Right here we have B, we have C, which is what's pulling down the spring. This is the spring and we have the lever. Um, this is this part of the lever arm, right? But we know that when we went to the second state, this is in A, in the first drawing, when we went to the second state right here, we know that this is the spring pulling down. And we know that basically we traveled Let's call it delta L, we tra the spring travel this much. And that is the secret to this problem. And you will see why in a second, don't worry. We're gonna go through the whole thing. So, 
We know that K, which is the stiffness of the spring right here, is equal to 120 newtons per meter, okay? We know that K times L is equal to F of S, which is what we're trying to find, but we don't have L, but we can find it. So we know that K times L initial, which is the length of the spring at this moment, L initial, is equal to 1.333 newtons, okay? We know that L initial is equal to 1.333 newtons divided by K, which is 120 newtons per meter. Newtons cancel out and you get that L initial is equal to 0 0.0111 meters. As I told you, the secret of this problem is in realizing delta L because you know that K times L will give you F of S, which is what we're trying to find. We know that L is equal to L initial plus delta L. In other words, how much more did the spring travel right here to become in this state? And that is delta L. Now, how do we find delta L? Well, simple. We have this 30 millimeters. We know that the distance from here to here is 30 millimeters. And we have this angle 10 degrees, right? So we know that this angle is 10 degrees. This angle is 10 degrees. Perfect. OK, so we know that this distance right here is 30 millimeters or 0.03 meters. So basically what we have to do is find the distance right here with some basic trigonometry. Now I know there are easier ways of doing this, but this is the way I like to do it. I have a 10 degree and let's call this the hypotenuse and let's call this y. So the hypotenuse times cosine of 10 is equal to 0.03. So the hypotenuse is equal to 2.03 divided by cosine of 10, which is 0 0.0304. Then you know that y is equal to the hypotenuse times sine of 0 0.03, which is equal to y is equal to 0 0.00529. y is equal to delta L. Delta L is equal to 0 0.00529. And that's what we're basically going to add to this equation. So we know that L is equal to L initial, which is 0 0.0111 plus 0 0.00529. When you add this together, you get this is 9, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 3, this is 6. This is one, and this is zero. This is point, there we go. Now, we plug this into here again, and we multiply it by 120, and we should get the right answer, which is 0 0.01639 times 120, 1.96. F of S is equal to 1.96 uh, Newtons in the second part. Final answer and final answer for the first part.